Peace, coming at you guys once again with another video. This time this video is, how is good credit and investment? Now, I'm gonna run through five different scenarios how good credit is an investment. So you guys get your pen and papers, get ready to take notes. If you don't have it, put the video on pause because you don't want to miss these jewels. And rewind it and get ready. If everybody's ready, you know, we go, it's go time. All right. <clears throat> now, the first reason is why good credit is an investment is because lower interest rate on loans. Now, what that means is the lower your interest rates on loans, that means the money costs you less. So, let's say you were paying $500 a month on a car note, right? And your credit, you worked on your credit, you built your credit up. When you refinanced, your car note went down to $300. So now you freed up $200 a month, $2,400 a year that you can use to put to whatever else that you may need. Otherwise, you put it in their pocket and instead of back into your pocket. So that's one reason why this doesn't even have, this can be a mortgage loan for a house. This can be a business loan. This can be any type of loan that you're getting from any kind of lender for whatever purpose. The interest is how much they're charging you for the money that you're buying. So the better your credit score is, it shows that you're less of a risk to them so the interest rate is lower, so it costs you less to get that money, which means more money stays in your pocket instead of going into their pocket. All right, I like that scenario. I like more money in my pocket. I don't know about you guys, but if you do, you follow some of these steps right here, all of them. Now, part the second rule is good credit can be leveraged. Now, what I mean by that is this. You can leverage good credit by getting loans and foot taking that money and investing it into whatever it may be, right? Now, that's a lot different than you coming out your own pocket because let's say you had $50,000 to start up a business. Nice. Let's say you have $50,000 to start up a business, right? Now, in cash, you saved up or somebody left it to you, you got it from insurance, a lawsuit, whatever. Now, what happens is you grind it out on the block. Now, let's say um, you leverage your credit and you got another $50,000. Now, instead of using your cash to put up for the business, you can take that money that you just leveraged your credit for and got that loan at a low interest rate, and boom, you flip that $50,000. Now you got that cash on reserve just in case. So let's say you just say this was for a small business that you started. Now if the business was to fold, okay, that's part of the game, it happens. Now your credit takes a hit, no problem, you can fix that. The good thing is you still got your 50,000 and you up in the game still. You didn't lose that 50,000, you still up with your 50,000. You can move into a, some, another scenario while you're repairing your credit, you go into dealing with somebody else who has good credit. And you guys work out whatever kind of arrangement. So credit can be leveraged in many different scenarios, right? But that's just one scenario I'm giving you as far as how you can leverage your credit. And you'll see in some of these other ones how you're leveraging your credit as well. Now, actually all of these are leveraging your credit. Now. The third one is you can charge to piggyback. Now, some of you may not be familiar with that term. Piggybacking is also being an authorized user. Now, what that means is you're adding someone onto your account and they're getting your credit history, your good history, they're getting it. So if someone had bad credit, well, matter of fact, it can't be bad credit because if they have anything negative reporting, then it's gonna go on your credit. So before you do this, you have to make sure you pull these people's report and make sure there's nothing negative reporting on their profile. But let's just say there's nothing negative reporting on their profile and they have a 500 credit score, right? Fine. Using this, right, you can charge them to piggyback. Let's say this individual had a low credit score 
but they had the funds and wanted to buy a house, right? Now, what happens is there's far and few loans that would probably cater to. There's some loans like FHA that you know are flexible with their credit, you know, um, scores that they accept. However, that means higher interest. That means that the money costs more because there's a higher risk. So what you can do is over the span of time, the average mortgage is about 30 years. So you can calculate how much they would be paying over that 30 year span and charge them a fraction of what that would be to piggyback on your credit and they'll get your credit history now. And then from that point on, they can apply for a loan, which would be a much better interest rate so that costs them less just a fraction of what it would have cost over the 30 years. You can do something like charge them 5,000, 10,000, whatever it may be. Your, your price is your price. Uh, you know, that's on you. I'm not telling anyone how to conduct their business as long as it's honorable. Now, what happens is from here, over that span of time, you sit there and you calculate, you come over there, boom. So now they pay this fee to you, they get but they benefit now they have your credit history they have a good score they have cheaper interest on their mortgage and that's their score from now on that's their credit history from now so at that point whatever they add on top of on top of it is just a plus but you've brought them into good credit history where everything costs them cheaper so this is an investment actually for the both parties the individual who has the low credit score an individual who has the high credit score. So this is another way you can leverage your credit and you can charge and make money off of piggybacking, you know, aka authorized user, right? Now, also, that's number three. Number four, and this can also work for any kind of loan. You know? Number four is you can act as a lender. Now, typically banks don't, print money. What banks do is borrow money from bigger banks and sell you their money at whatever interest rate. Now, the reason why banks have a particular requirement when you're going to for a loan is because the banks that they're borrowing from have a requirement. So they have to gauge how um, they have to gauge how the, the risk factor of this loan so they know they have to know where they're at. So when they go to the other bank, the other bank is going to assess them as well. So they may, let's say they borrow, you know, say you wanted to, you wanted three hundred thousand dollars for mortgage for a house. The bank doesn't print money. They're going to get that money from another bank, right? And then let's say they go to this other bank to get the money to loan to you, and the bank charges them two percent interest on that money. Now the bank now. The bank who you went to charges you 5% interest on that loan. They just made 3% on that $300,000 loan for 30 years. That's called fractional reserves, right? You can do the same thing. You can sit here and act as a lender. Obviously, you incorporate and take the necessary steps. And you can act as a lender and put yourself in that same position instead of going to the bank. You can be the lender. You know, you can sit here. You don't have to start out with million dollar loans. You can start out with small business loans. You can start out, you know, if or get it, you can pull your resources and you and the group together can cater to the million dollar loans, two million or whatever it may be. You know, I'm not here to, to tell you to, you know, not shoot high. I want you to shoot high. You know, you should shoot high. You should want to shoot high. So you can do exactly what they can do. That's another way you can leverage your credit. You can act as the lender, you know? And in fact, you can act as the lender and then have programs within your company where the people who have bad credit can pay a certain fee to piggyback and you work or you give them the credit history, blah, 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 and then they can borrow the money from you. Act as the lender. So. You see, these are, these are just, you know, we have one more, but this is just different ways that you can use good credit as an investment. You have to understand how to use credit. Credit is a tool. Now, the fifth way is authorized user for your family, friends, or business partners. Now, 
when you're using somebody, when you add somebody as an authorized user and have them piggyback on your credit, you can add children as little as, as young as 13 years old. Now, by the time they're 18, they'll have assessed, they'll, they'll have accumulated a five year history. Now they got 18, they can legally apply for credit and they can get credit. But they'll be 18 years old with a good credit history. So they'll come into the game with a solid history. Now, what you can do at that point, whether it be your, your people in your family, your, your sons, your daughters, whoever, your, your friends that you want to put on, business partner, whatever. But you can do that, let's, see, let's use your uh, fa uh, family, for example. If you, you were doing that, let's say you had a couple of your kids and your kids, by the, when they come at 18, you can leverage your credit and their credit at that point to start a family business or to invest in something, you know, so while they're 18, they have their money working for them. So if they decide to, you know, go to college and, you know, choose a job or whatever. When it's time for them, they always have some level of security, true security, not job security, because everyone who has a job is one decision away from being fired. And that's the reality of it. So now you can sit there or even business partners. You can have the good credit and your individual uh, business partner of yours can have this the skill. You can have the, the credit and the money. They can have the know-how to operate this business. So you can sit there and piggy use them as an authorized user on your account to build them up. So when the time comes, you can double your leverage on. They can borrow, they can leverage theirs, and you can leverage yours for the business. You can double your leverage and push and excel the growth of the business, obviously at the speed that it needs to be. But that's just an option, you know? Same thing with friends, family, etc. But, you know, there's many different creative ways that you can leverage credit. You just have to be savvy about what you're doing. But, and by no means, you know, sit here and not think credit is an investment. Good credit, credit is definitely an investment. It costs you more to have bad credit than it does to have good credit. So for all you guys who got your tax returns, instead of buying Gucci belts and red bottoms, fix your credit. Things will be a lot cheaper and you'll free up a lot more money and a lot easier out here for you, all right? Well, just wanted to give you guys five ways of so you guys can see how is good credit and investment. You know, you can follow us on Facebook at Mr. Flip These Bricks. At YouTube, subscribe to the page and share. It's a free game. You can learn it. Share it for your people so everyone can learn it. So no one can sit here and have to complain about being broke. Subscribe to the YouTube page at Mr. Flip These Bricks. You can follow us on Instagram at Mr. Flip These Bricks. And always remember, always make the next move the best move. Peace.